Hello. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about conditional formatting. I believe I haven't covered that topic in one of my previous Excel 2013 videos. And also talk a little bit about something called spark lines and some other types of charts. So this will be a very simple uh, video where you just get to understand how you can add and make your charts and your information look better. Uh, and I'll have a, vid uh, a sample file link in the description below so you can download it if you wanted to and you can practice along with me. So in this scenario I've got this sample file where I've got some sales from 2000 and 1999 and I did a difference equal to C2 minus B2 and now what I want to do is I want to put some conditions on it so that the colors will be showing up according to the conditions I put. So that's what's called a conditional formatting. Formatting means that I just want to change the colors, say from here, make it red or whatever. And I can also use the number more button, that is format cell, and then I can give it a number style where I can show the negative numbers in a certain way. But what I want to do is I want to set a condition and tell it that if you see a number like this, make it green in color. If you see a number of a certain type or a certain number, make it red in color. So we'll do that. Now you can highlight just the lines like this. Or if you wanted to apply the condition on the whole column, then you just click on the alphabet D in this case. And now in the right hand side, there is an option called conditional formatting. You click it. And then I go to highlight cell rules greater than and then now you can type any number there for now I want to say greater than zero which will be all the positive numbers and you can also click on a cell which has a number so you can just click it so that you can then keep on changing that cell value and then the conditions colors will keep on changing so for now red uh, zero and then I want to make it something green color and you can see that it's starting to change there and if I wanted I could actually go to custom format and then I can choose a green color from here or anything else I wanted to do make it bold and other options which are available like borders and fill and I'll click OK and I'll click OK so now if I just click here you see the green color showed up I don't know why the difference also became green color I go back, highlight, go back to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, less than. Now in this less than zero, I want it to be red. So I could choose one of these red colors or red text or go to custom. And then I click OK. So there it is. Now if any of these numbers change, by mistake, I, instead of 625, this was 725 and I hit enter. It becomes a positive number. So right away, it will become green in color. If I change it back to 600, it becomes negative 50. Now if I click here, I can go back to conditional formatting, clear rules, and I can say clear rules from selected. Or if I want it, I could clear the rules from the entire sheet. Okay, so I'll just do that. And uh, if you did not want to use this highlight cell rules, you can actually use data bars like this. And then you can just add. So you see when I point to it, it automatically shows like different ranges. And so it looks at the differences. So you see here, the negative 50 is going down and 25 is going up and 15 is kind of up. So it just looks at your range of numbers and it figures out the bars. And there are lots of other things you can apply, color scales. As I point to it, you see it starts to change. Icon sets can be used to go up and down, sideways, or circle, or the cell phone type bars. So to indicate what's going on, so you can look at it and you can see where the problems are. And this is the kind of a thing you can see if you look at the stock market program. Somewhere, somebody has programmed these values and then the stocks will start to show up where you can actually invest and if you wanted you could also look into managing the rules and then you can control the rules up here you can edit the rules so here you can change the colors and there are some other things that you can look into if you wanted to and I can just click OK 
Now you can actually have these bars and also the conditions I had set. So you could choose either or or both and it will work. And then all of us remember the clear rules option. I can clear rules from selected. So that's what conditional formatting is. I'm going to come to this next sheet called spark lines. So spark lines are like small indicators that I can have in this cell to show me like a line where I can see what's happening. So this is like a performance review of individual people uh, January and April of 2010 and then January, April of 2011 and 2012. So I can kind of see a line that can show me what's happening with this individual people. And usually they could be either here or they could be on the side. So you can always insert a column here if you did not have one by you either right clicking and then choosing insert and then choosing to insert an entire column so it's already there now in the insert tab there is a category here called spark lines I believe this feature is also there in 2010 I'm not sure about 2007 uh, you may look into it and see if you see it so here I choose line and then it's asking me what is your data range and I'll say my data range is this and then it's asking me what is your location so I'll just remove that and I'll say the location is this so the data range and the location I click OK and you see it puts like a line there and you can see how it is going up and down based on the numbers now if you remember from the previous videos, whenever you have an element of any type in Excel or Word, you start to get tools for it. So here, I can design the colors. Like, so you see, I can design the colors. I can even change the colors from here. And I can say, let's see, show me markers. So you see, when I hit markers, it's showing me the dots on it. And you can also choose the marker color, and I can say, you know, whatever the marker colors needs to be. And you can, so you can make it look nicer by choosing these options. And there are some more things, like you can edit your data if you found that you need to add or change something. You can do that. Um, you can also change your line to a column, like this. So if you want, you can do that. And if you ever wanted to, you can clear it. And in fact, I think I just click on the drop down button and then clear all. So it will remove all of them if you needed to remove it. Or maybe I need to highlight it and then clear all. Okay. So that's the idea of this. And I'll just do this one up here on this side. So, same idea. For here, say I wanted to do a line. So I can go to insert, line, choose my range go to the next line and then this is already selected because I already clicked on it and I click OK and there's the line so I can see the sales kind of going up now here if I want I can insert this column in the spark lines and I highlight the range and there's my location which is already selected as I had clicked on it I click OK and there it shows me that the expenses have been going up and here I want to put like a profit and loss so that's under insert I'll use this win loss one I click it highlight my range and then the location is already there I click OK and there you can see you see you can see the loss being shown and again you got the tools that you can apply any of these things and you can change the coloring on it if you wanted it and in the sparking tools also you have the clear option to clear selected spark lines and it will be removed or you could use the clear button in the home tab if you wanted next I just wanted to introduce you to some of the uh, new or maybe some kind of a chart which I haven't talked about in the previous one so I'll come to the stock chart option so I've got these different volumes and high low and closing points and I'll go to highlight it and I'll go to insert and you can go through one of these options here to choose your chart or you can even go to this recommended charts and see what are they recommending so they're recommending some of these but I want to go to this all chart section and then from here go to stock and I can choose say this one and I maybe this one 
I think for some reason this is not allowing me to click OK. I don't know why. So this one. And I can click OK. And there's my chart. And you can see how it shows the lines on the top. And you can change it to any of these designs, the chart tools up here, to different kinds to make it look nicer. And they might have some more options here. So it's a nice indicator. And then you can also use these plus signs here to add any elements you wanted or remove them if you needed anything. Data tables. And as you point to it, it starts to show up so you don't have to even click it to see what's going to happen there. And then this is to look at the styles, which is also available from here. But you can also navigate through here, go to the color options, and then you can choose whatever colors you want. And they, they change the color combinations as you are pointing to it. And then you're just the changing the values and selecting your data if you wanted to change your data values or your range. And if you didn't want it, you can always hit delete and it is gone. And I'll just come to the next one for surface. And this is like a temperature and what humidity uh, shows up and how does it feel like kind of a thing. So I'll just highlight this whole thing. And I'll go to insert recommended charts and see if they have that recommended. And you can click on them to see and see if it looks good. But for now, I want to go to this all charts and choose surface. And uh, let's see, I'll use this one. And then I'll click OK. And there's my surface chart. It's kind of, you can see, and as you expand it, it will look a little better. So that the numbers up here start to show up nicely. And you can always make the changes if you needed it. And there are some options for quick layouts. So it looks a little better. So there are certain types of data, like these type of data, uh, like usually scientific type data is where this gets very useful in applying. And you can always change the chart type to whatever else you wanted it to be. You can do it from here. Come to the next one. Uh, in this one, we'll try to look at like a donut chart. So I'll highlight. And this also can be good in like a column chart, but we just want to look at a donut chart. Insert. I can straight away go to the recommended charts, uh, and donut usually is not listed. And I'll go to all charts. Uh, look for donut. The donut chart is part of the pie. And then there is the donut. And I can click OK. And there it is. And again, you, you might want to find a better looking one so you can click on them you can always use the layout option to get the right way of showing it whichever looks better and you'll still have the options on the right hand side that you can change things from if you needed to add something there's also options to change colors from here a lot of these features you'll find that they are available in all the different charts so this is the idea of a donor chart and you might find that they look nicer in some form and not in all of them. And I'll come to the next one now which is for a bubble. So up here I'm just going to highlight it and I'll go to insert, recommended charts, I'll go to all charts and there is the up here in the XY scatter and there is the bubble either this one or this one and I'll click OK and there it is and now I can just start playing around with the one of these styles and you see this one I kind of like it uh, put the numbers in there too so the idea is that how many units were sold in a certain month and how much profit was made so I can see that okay what is the best one uh, this is this is 47 units were sold but I had more profit because the profit is being identified by the circle the size of the circle so that's where the profits are coming from and this is tracking the number of things and um, also from here I want to just point out something more from here as you go to each and every one you can see there is this arrow 
that you can click it and you can control even more things so if I wanted to add some un legends access titles so you can when you click at the arrow you start to get more options in there that you can click on and this is available for all of them so I can choose a len um, trend line if I wanted to add you see there's a line showing up there and one of the new features I like is that when you go here and you point to any one of them and then you go to more options it just opens up a whole bunch of things right here and uh, you can start making changes here with this option and you can add 3D format if it was applicable in this chart you can add shadows if you wanted to so the lot of these things can be applied to them from going from here and I can just close this so this is something that I like and I think I talked about in the previous video too that this is a pretty good feature to work with and I just want to talk about one more kind so I think I'm just going to come to this one stock chart here and I'll highlight it and I can go to the recommended charts or I'll point to this one for combo and I can choose this one and you see this is like a combo chart so I can have the trend line and also the columns here so if I needed to use that the combo charts can also be useful so that's it for this video uh, and uh, I'm planning to add some more things uh, which I'll do that in the coming weeks thanks for watching